Hello, my name is Reverend Brian Richards. If you haven't seen me before, well, this is the, probably the first time you see me. And the reason why I'm dressed up like this today is be, to remind people, uh, local people, that I can also do weddings. Uh, and uh, so I'm making a joyful noise for the Lord. That's what the word says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And to remind, remind people that uh, we don't just preach the gospel, but we, we go out and do weddings and uh, we make ourselves available to anyone in Australia who wants a, a wedding. God bless you real good today. We are going to minister on the holiness of God. The word of God said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And uh, so I'm going to sing a song called I Found the Answer. I don't expect anybody to join in because I'm the one who made the song. <laughs> but I'll teach you this song, I Found the Answer. I found the answer. I made Jesus love you. When I'm in the world of my life, I will make you to say the answer. I found the answer to the truth and the life of the world. He is not yours, you know, he's alive. And don't you know, in the world he does expert, but he goes for me and you. He's not dead, you know, he's alive. And don't you know, in the world he does expert, but he goes for me and you. Oh, hey, I'm here. I found the answer when I made Jesus my feet. He is my master, Lord of everything. When I made him Lord of my life, I was able to say yes. I found the answer to the open and the way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. <coughs> well, we've uh, we've been attacked spiritually uh, for all this week. I think uh, we've been attacked spiritually. Uh, um, with uh, with coughs and colds and you know I thought the flu season had finished a long time ago in Australia here we have a, a certain time of the year they call the flu season <laughs> and the elderly go to the doctors and get a, an injection to overcome the coughs and colds and flus that you know get around and so uh, we've overcome that uh, um, basically all through the winter we overcome and now it's just beginning uh, spring in Australia and the birds are singing um, and we were reminded what spring really is all about it's spring because it springs back to winter some days and then goes on and have summer you know so it's not summer yet and it's not winter but we're in between and you have one hot day and one cold day and this sort of brings on maybe coughs and colds and sore throats and all of that however we know that the Lord said that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed from all sickness and disease and we are redeemed from the curse. Amen. Galatians 3.13 says, Cursed is he that hangs on a tree. And Jesus hung on a tree, a cross of Calvary. 
uh, for you and for me. That's that sounds like a song, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, Jesus died for you and me on the cruel cross of Calvary, and uh, and that's the truth. In Isaiah 53 and verse 5 says, uh, "Surely, surely." Uh, he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, and by the stripes of Jesus, by all the whips and the lashes and bruises that he took on that cruel cross before they crucified him, by that punishment we are healed today. Jesus Christ is the one who paid the price that we could not pay. You know, we know, according to the Bible, the wages of sin is death. For the gift of God is eternal life unto righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you haven't received that, then today you can receive that. We give you a chance to hear the word of God. And if you like what we're saying, it's all the word of God. And you can repent. If you've never repented before in your life, you repent. You turn away from the life of sin and uh, turn on to God and the gift of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost which is uh, the kingdom of God when Jesus came here he, he, he showed us a better way and uh, they said you know when they, I say they many people, even his own disciples thought that he's going to come here to set up his own kingdom because they called him a king and uh, every king has a kingdom and they thought well he's going to set up his kingdom and when they couldn't see his kingdom being set up they said Lord haven't you come to set up your kingdom he says not at this time he says my kingdom does not come by observation you cannot see it it's a spiritual kingdom but you can experience the righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Later on, when Jesus comes back again, he comes to set up his kingdom and the whole world will know that Jesus uh, is Lord, that Jesus is God, that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the Word was God. And uh, that same Word was manifest manifest as Jesus Christ and the world knew him not the whole world knew him not he revealed himself to just 12 of his disciples and later on revealed himself to the Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that we have today and Jesus says before he went to the cross he says blessed are those that believe talk about his disciples blessed are you because you believe and you've seen and you believe he says but blessed are those more who have not seen what you say you know? who have not seen and yet they believe and they will believe on your words that's in John 17 22 and he says in the glory that God has given me from the beginning I now give you and you know Religion today, re religious people today, they'd say, they'd preach things like, your righteousness is a filthy rags, you can never be righteous, you know. And uh, yes, in the Old Testament, there is a scripture that says that your righteousness is a filthy rags. But today, you can say that you're righteous because he who knew no sin was made sin for us that you would become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That Second Corinthians chapter 5 and around about 21 tells us that we become ambassadors for Christ after we received his righteousness. He, talking about Jesus, he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I ask you again, are you righteous? 
Are you saved? Do you have the glory of the Lord upon you? And there's another skeleton that would like to get out of the closet, and that is lots of people will preach, My glory will I not share with another. In Isaiah it says that. My glory will I not share with another. But I tell you, today we are not another. We are one of the same. And in, once again, in John 17, uh, verse 21, I believe it is, somewhere in there, chapter 17, it tells you that the glory that I have, I share with you. So he's going to share his glory with us. It's not our glory, but we have it. It's not our righteousness, but we have it. And so our confession today is that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ, then you're a new creation. All things pass away and all things become new. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, You are a new creation. And the literal translation of that is a, a, a brand new species of being that never lived before. That's who you are. And we are commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he told his disciples, he says, You be holy even as your heavenly Father is holy. So if we're made in the likeness of God, and if we're born again and filled with his spirit, we are commanded to live a holy life. Right there I'm going to pause and I'm going to get my son to read for me because he's a better reader than me and uh, he's going to read what I've got in my book but I can't take credit for that. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that led me to print a book published. I think this is the book that we're going to read from. It's called How to Be a Christian Without Being Religious. The religion today has got a lot to answer for. But relationship is what we preach. We don't preach religion. And I've stopped calling myself a religious minister. I am a Christian minister and I preach relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a good title. Relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this is talking about. How to be a Christian without being religious. God bless you. My son jo Joshua Richards is going to read for us now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joshua Barry Richards. Today I'm going to be reading from How to Be a Christian Without Being Religious. Slowly. You can buy this book at TravelBuilder2.com. It's more books at TravelBuilder3.com. If you would like uh, to subscribe to Dad's mailing list, then you go to RevBrianRichards.com. Um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and press the bell notification to get all our videos every time we upload a video. You'll be notified. Okay. And we're going to be reading from pages 36 to 37, the second paragraph. Oh my. God hates sin, and so should you. The Father said to Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 9, You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than anyone else. Jesus loved what was right and hated what was wrong, and because of that, he was anointed with joy and gladness above everybody around him. The devil does not want you to know that the happiest people on the planet are the most holiest people, the most satisfied and the most sanctified. Like Moses, they chose to follow after God instead of the ultimate choices the devil put before them. The pleasure of sinners is temporary, but the joy of God followers is eternal. The devil will lie to you and say the opposite is true. He'll try to convince you that the only way to have fun is to sin. Jesus never sinned and he was never depressed. No, he was filled with joy and gladness. He was the gladdest of the glad. There's no amount of temporary pleasure worth forfeiting your relationship with God 
for all your family, your job, and even your life. You have the responsibility to walk upright before God in what He has given you freely through the blood of Jesus. You need to be like Jesus, who was holy, blameless, unstained by sin. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6 says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. That is a higher core that many are unwilling to believe is possible. They don't understand that God will not tell you to do something that was not possible for you to do. No, person is righteous in and out of themselves, but by faith you believe that Jesus gave you his righteousness, that and that and this is what makes you acceptable in the eyes of God. You need to be holy as he is holy. You need to work Walk in the light which is on the path of obedience. You need to do what you know you are supposed to do. Believe in your heart that you are separate from sin and it's possible for you to go days, weeks and even months without sinning. Don't listen to those who would tell you that it's human nature for a person to sin every day. That may be true for sinners, but it's not true for a born again child of God. That will now come back on. Praise the Lord. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Yeah, that's really worth a hand clap. And I hope you are clapping out there in uh, wherever you are. I pray that you receive this word with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Now, that is taught about the Christian. But you may not have received Jesus before in your life. You may have heard of Jesus and you may have even gone to church and heard a sermon. But not many churches today preach the old-fashioned gospel where they say you must be born again. You know, in John chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, it starts out where a man named Nicodemus came to see Jesus. And Nicodemus was preaching the same things, teaching actually, he was a teacher of the Jews. And he was teaching the same things that Jesus was teaching. And he, however, he couldn't um, heal anybody, he couldn't see any, any miracles. So he snuck out one night without telling anybody. He wanted to see Jesus. And he says in John 3 that he came to Jesus by night. So he didn't you know, use the, the darkness of night to come to see him. He didn't want anybody else to, to, to know. And he came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, which means teacher, Rabbi, we know that you are a man of God because no one can do these miracles, signs and wonders that you do. Um, how is it that you're doing that? And uh, I'm teaching the same things, you know. So Jesus' words in John 3, 3 says, Nicodemus, marvel not if I say unto you that you must be born again. And um, so Nicodemus said, well, how can I be born again when I'm old? How can I go back to my mother's womb and be born? And he says, that which is natural is natural, but that which is spiritual is spiritual. Marvel not, don't be surprised. Marvel not, if I say unto you, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And then he explains, just like the wind comes and it goes, no man sees it come, no man sees where it's going. But they hear the sound thereof and they see the effects of what happens. You know, the winds blow the trees. Sometimes it blows over our garbage bins. And uh, right now, you know, we're in between seasons. Uh, spring one day and winter the next. And, you know, it blows over garbage cans and all that. So we can see the effects of the wind. And Jesus said, so is the way 
of the Spirit. You don't see it coming and where it's going, but you see what it's done to people. You know, you see what it's done to people. And you can see that what it's done for people in your hometown, wherever you are, wherever you are listening to me in the world, you can see other Christians that have changed that have had this life-changing experience through knowing Jesus. How are all there other churches that will not preach on the born-again experience because it's in the Bible, but they don't see it? And that's because we not only need the born-again experience, we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God came to people on the day of Pentecost, you'll see that in Acts 2, in Acts chapter 2, was the fulfillment of the promise that we spoke about in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you, you know, and you'll preach in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Samaria, Judea, the other most part of the earth. And then goes on to Acts 2, and it talks about, because they were told to go to Jerusalem and wait until they be endured with power from on high. So, in Acts 2, the story uh, as we see there, and it's not a story, it's a true uh, event that happened, that they, they, um, they received the power of the Holy Spirit when they went into the upper room and they prayed for several days because they had to make a decision of who was going to take the place of Judas Iscariot. Remember, Judas was one of the twelve, the original, and now he was... Uh, he, he had died by suicide and because uh, he sold out Jesus and couldn't forgive himself so he um, he he killed himself you know some of those different things that people say about that and some people say he hung himself or whatever but we don't know but he died because he couldn't uh, forgive himself, he knew, he, you know, God would forgive him for anything. God will forgive you for anything. Even if you've sold out Jesus and you portrayed Jesus and you've told lies and says, no, I don't want to know about this Jesus, you rejected him in times past, God will forgive you now. In 1 John 1 9, in 1 John 1 9, that's the epistle of John, that's not the gospel of John. The epistle of John, letter to the church, was saying in 1 John, that's 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, says, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your trespasses when you repent. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you choose to walk in the light and to walk in love and let nothing hinder your fellowship with God, then you're in the right place today to receive Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus has rose again from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and by your confession what you say about it is made unto salvation so we pray and i ask you and invite you to pray with me today if you've never asked jesus into your life and be lord of your life today is that day and you will sense you've entered into a place where you are peace with God and you have righteousness, righteousness, peace and joy of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you and, and uh, you become a holy vessel unto God. Is that what you want today? Then let's do it. Let's pray. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, 
I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus rose again from the dead. And I ask him to be my Lord. To be my Savior. And forgive me of all my sin. And make me born again. I believe that I receive right now forgiveness and the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on me, Lord. Fill me, Lord, with your grace and with your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. The power of God just hit me. Nearly fell over. <laughs> well, if that's the first time you've ever said a prayer like that, then welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome into the family of God. Because there's brothers and sisters all over the world that are receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is the end times. No matter where you read in the Bible, it talks about the end times and what's going to happen. Well, it's happening now. The world is coming to an end as we know it. And there's a new world about to begin. And for you, as a born-again Christian, receive the new life in Christ, then you right where you're supposed to be. If you're right standing with God, if you are receive the holiness of God today, then you are never be more right with God. Now, what you need to do is find yourself a teacher, find yourself a pastor that believes in Mark 16, 15, it says, those that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Those that are not baptized shall be done. Now, I don't know what darn means, but my son, that you just met, Joshua, looked it up on a computer, on a Google, actually, and he says in Google that if you be damned, then you're destined for hell. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer with me today, you saved a sinner from going to hell. If, you, if that person is you, I'd love to hear from you. You can send me an email as a marriage celebrant 2018 gmail.com. That's marriage celebrant 2018 gmail.com. And I will answer you and I will send you some material that will continue to change your life, that you will learn about the Bible. And I'm not asking you to join the church or be religious. Just find Jesus in a relationship with Him. Through the written Word of God, you will have that life-changing experience through knowing Jesus is Lord. Can you say that with me? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and if you receive a letter from me, uh, if you receive a message from me, it will be like this. And written on the bottom of the message will be Jesus and the Word are one. Can you say that with me? Jesus and the Word are one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. That Word was made flesh and dwell among us. We know that as Jesus Christ. He paid the price on the cross. The price, wages of sin, is death. He paid that death for you. And lots of people around the world are dying in the name of Jesus and it's not making a hill of beans to anybody. You can't earn salvation. You can't die for your sins and earn righteousness. It has to be Jesus who is the perfect sacrifice. And your job and my job now is in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 present your body to God a living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed as you renew your mind with the word of God a 
Let's see, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It goes on to say that this is good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. Hallelujah. I hope this has changed your life. I really hope that you've learned something today and uh, that you learn to overcome the world, the flesh and the devil. That's where the principalities and powers and wicked spirits dwell amongst us. But we can overcome the wickedness that is in the world. We can overcome by using the word of God as a two-edged sword. Ephesians 5 tells us to use the word of God and actually by faith you can put on the armor of God and speak the word of God and it will work for you. It will not return to you void or empty. It will accomplish that which you please, which God pleases for you to be an overcomer. Amen. To be an overcomer. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord, for this word today. I pray, Father God, that people receive this word with joyfulness into their heart and they have a life-changing experience through knowing Jesus and the Word are one. Can you say that again? Jesus, Jesus and the Word are one. God bless you now. See you again next week.
your fire, release your power. Thank you. 